you boys and girls, it's Chris Eads, and on our line is Wootini, here with another one of my Gay Gamer video podcasts. Uh, this week I saw another movie. Well, actually I saw two movies, technically. I forgot about the second one. Uh, first, I went to see Knives Out, uh, which unfortunately did not live up to all of the hype. Uh, it's been, like, super overhyped about, you know, how brilliant it is, and how clever it is, and how incredible it is and best movie of the year, and all that nonsense, and it was good, but it wasn't the best movie of the year, and it wasn't as clever as it thought it was, really. Um, so unfortunately, whereas Parasite did live up to the hype, this I felt like it didn't. Um, like, it's an intriguing whodunit, um, it kind of plays with the conventions a little, it like kind of reveals early on in the film what happened, um, but then, of course, there's more twists and turns. Um, the problem I think I had with it was, like, the cast is great, um, but I feel like they're underused, and it focuses on the nurse character too much, and you don't get as much of the rest of the family, who's all backstabby and awesome, and she's, like, the sympathetic one that you're, like, rooting for, um, and it, like, shifts focus to her, and then it kind of drags. Um, and it was, I feel like it didn't need to be as long as it was. It was like just over two hours, I think, and or close to two hours. And um, I think a little tightening would have really helped and just pick up the pace a little. Um, because the problem is, is that it's so draggy and slow paced that when there are big twists and turns, they just sort of go, eh. They, I don't think they have the punch that he meant them to have, or that they should have had. Um, I mean, it's fine. It's entertaining. The cast is good. There's some good twists and turns to the mystery, and you're like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. But you're not like, oh! You know, there was no point where I was like, oh my god, what a shocking revelation! You know, it's just sort of, oh, okay. Oh, well, that makes sense. Oh, all right, sure. You know? So I was sort of let down because, again, it's one of those movies that got, like, super hyped up and then it ne doesn't... They never live up to the hype, usually. I mean, even Parasite, I don't think, lived up completely to the hype, but Knives Out definitely did not. All those accolades, I'm just like, take it down a notch because, you know, lower your expectations a little when you go to see it. It's perfectly entertaining. Um, the other movie that I went to see, I, which I wasn't thinking about because it wasn't an AMC movie, um... My husband and I went to Film Forum to see 63 Up, which is the latest and possibly the last installment in the Up series by director Michael Apted. Um, he ha started back in the 60s with 7 Up uh, and documented the, these seven, these, this series of boys and girls uh, in Britain and asked them about you know their lives and their childhoods and what they wanted to be when they grew up and stuff. And then every seven years, he checks in with them to see what they've been up to and how their lives have progressed. And, you know, comparing to what they said before and did they follow through with the school they wanted to go to and the career they wanted to get into and that sort of thing. And just to see how it all panned out. And so now at 63, uh, he's, you know, got a lot to cover because he's like, when they were seven, they said this, and 14, and 21, and 28, and 35, and 42, and 48, you know, it's a lot. So it was a very long movie, but it was very, very good. And um, if you've never seen any of the series, obviously you have to start at the beginning, because while 63 Up does give you footage from the previous ones to help put everything in context, the dramatics and, like, the drama of their lives is more effective if you've watched all of the films leading up to it. And, of course, it also helps if you've been watching them in... Not, we haven't been watching them in quite real time. I think we discovered the series by the time they were maybe like 42 up. Uh, so we caught up on the previous ones. But then from then, every seven years, you watch a new installment and you check in with these people and it's fascinating. Um, so I recommend the series. Um, it's going to be hard to find in a theater because it's literally playing in just one art house theater. So, But they're available on DVD. Um, I don't know if they're streaming anywhere. I know everybody streams now, but probably not. Because whenever you want to see something, it's not streaming anywhere. <laughs> um, 
as for gaming, um, I have, I, okay, this is going to get a little ranty. I've got some stuff to say about Dragon Quest XI. This could, I just want to warn you ahead of time, this could get a little, little ranty. Um, as you might recall, last episode, I finished the story and got the end credits of Dragon Quest, and then saved my game, and then was prepared to jump into the post-game content. Um, which I did. I jumped in, and I was expecting, you know, a little bit of wrapping up everyone's story kind of a thing. But they were, that was not the case. In fact, what happened was, they're like, hey, so, okay, that was the ending of the game and the story, that was the end of the story, but what if it wasn't? What if we could do a different ending? What if we changed it and did this as the ending instead? How about that? And I'm like, okay, fine. So I'm trying to be, like, vague enough that if you haven't played this, I'm not spoiling the ending for you. Um, so I'm like, okay, fine. So I play through to get this new ending that they're like, a different ending, a better ending. And I'm like, okay, I guess it would be a better ending. Sure, fine. Let's fight our way through and do that. So I do that, and I do, like, the mini-boss, and then I go and I'm like, okay, and then, of course, there's the big boss challenge, which, surprisingly, was the first time that I actually died. I lost everyone during a fight and had to actually restart. And it's funny because the game is like, do you want to restart from your last save position? You'll lose this much golden experience. And I'm like, well, no, because I literally just created a save point right before going into that battle. So I'm going to go back to the title screen and load my game save and not lose any gold or experience at all. Thank you. Um, so it just takes a little extra time to quit and reload. Um, and then the second time through, I knew I could adjust my strategy appropriately, and I was able to beat the boss. And I said, okay, fine, so this is your boss battle, and now this is the end of the game. No. Then it's like, okay, you beat the boss, but there's actually something else that's even worse. It's an even bigger evil that you have to defeat now. And I'm like, are you kidding me with this right now? I'm like, fine. Let's go defeat this other evil. The problem is, and this is where it lost me, when you say, okay, fine, we defeated the bad guy, but there's an even worse bad guy, a badder guy, that you have to go defeat, but in order to do that, you have to journey over here, and then journey over here, and then journey over here, and I'm like, oh, this is tedious. Then you have to go here, and then they're like, okay, now you have to go on these trials. And I'm like, what? And there's three trials that you have to complete in order to even advance to the next stage of maybe fighting this boss. I feel like after those three trials, you then would battle the boss and win the game completely. But with the way this game has been structured, I don't even know if that's the case. You might do those three trials, and then they're like, but now you have to do these other things, and then you can battle the boss. Maybe. So I'm like, fine. So I go to do the trial... And the trial is super tedious, and it's basically like, work your way through these areas that are from the game, just do it again, we'll give it, like, different enemies, and we'll make it tougher, and if it's outdoors, it's got a dark, scary sky, because it's this other, you know, dimension thing. Um, but it's just repurposing old areas that you just have to go through again in order to get to the next one that's another repurposed area that you push your way through again, and then at the very end of the trial, which they were like, this is the first trial, it's the easiest one, but it'll still be challenging. At the end of the trial, you have to fight a boss, and you have to beat them in 25 moves or less. Unfortunately, it was a really tough battle, and by the time I finally won it, I was told, nope, sorry, it took you 30. And I'm like, and I'm like crap. They're like, do you want to try it again? And I'm like... Not really, because it was kind of a pain in the ass, and I don't know that I'm powerful enough to do it in 25 moves or less. I don't know. I might not be. I mean, and the thing is, is that I could have tried it again with, like, a different combination of characters to see if I tried some different attacks, if maybe it would work a little better. But the problem was, is that he's like, if you're not strong enough, if you don't think you're strong enough to beat this, maybe you should teleport back to the real world and do some miscellaneous 
quests and missions and battles and level up some, and then come back and try it again. And that is where Dragon Quest XI lost me. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, so, this game was beautifully structured. I worked my way through the whole story and never had any... There were some really challenging fights occasionally. There were some boss battles that I had to work to get through. But I never felt like I had to stop and grind levels in order to advance through the story. It was perfectly structured. I got through the entire story with little trouble. Only a couple of restarts. It was perfectly fine. And now they're like, oh, but if you want to do this post-game stuff, you've got to grind. You've got to go back to the real world. You've got to fight monsters. And it's just like, it was one thing to play the game and do the battles in service of a story. Like, that you'd fight your way through an area, and then it would advance the story. But here, you're just going through the same areas over and over and over again because they're just repurposing them. And it just feels like padding. It just feels like they're padding out the runtime of the game. And that, to me, is not fun. Like, I don't want to grind levels. That's not fun to me. That's not the kind of RPG I like to play. I don't play the dungeon crawlers where you grind levels. Like, that isn't fun to me. I want a story. And I had a great story. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, here's your post-game content. Now you have to grind levels. And I'm like, do I, though? Because I that's not fun to me. And also, it's completely unnecessary because when I finished the end credits of the game, I was at, like, 63 hours and change, which is a solid amount of time to spend playing a game, especially an RPG like this. When I saved my game and said, you know what, I'm not going back to the real world to grind levels, I'm going to shut you off and put you aside for a little bit because you're making me angry and you're kind of starting to ruin the joy that I felt through the entire story of this game. Um, I was at 69 and change. Like, that's absurd that I played over six hours of endgame content, and there's still more to go. Like, I feel like there's at least another ten hours of endgame content. Plus, who knows how long, because I might get through the first one, and then I'll do the second trial, but then I'll get to that boss, and I won't be able to beat him in 20 moves or 30 moves or whatever they give me and I'll have to go back and level up again, and the grinding of levels, it just artificially extends the life of the game, which is completely unnecessary because, like I said, by the time I finished the story, I was, like, the, what I thought was the final battle before they said, oh no, there's a batter boss. I was probably around 65 hours in, and I'm like, that's great. That would have been a perfect time to end the game. I don't need another 5 to 10 hours of level grinding because... That's just annoying and unnecessary. And, like, it just made me so angry. <laughs> like, it made me weirdly angry that the game was suddenly like, oh, I'm sorry, you're not leveled up enough. You should go grind a little. And I was like, no, F you, Dragon Quest Eleven. I'm going to put you down, and maybe I'll come back to you later and see if I can finish the full game at some point. But right now, you're making me angry, and it's kind of ruining all of the good feelings I had about the game leading up to the end credits. This post-game content soured me. Seriously. It's unnecessary. So that made me really mad. So, whereas originally I thought I would be playing that on my trip to my sister's for Thanksgiving, I decided no, because I don't want to be stuck on a bus going upstate and forced to grind levels in Dragon Quest. Like, that won't be fun. It'll just irritate me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to put it aside, and I'm going to put in Luigi's Mansion 3. Because I had bought that thinking I only had a few hours left of post-game content. I didn't know that there was going to be 10 to 15 hours of post-game content that was going to take me another couple of weeks to get through. Uh, so, But I had it, and I said, you know what? Fine. I put it in, and I said, let's play Luigi's Mansion 3 on the bus. We'll give that a start. And it was refreshing. It was a lovely change of pace. It was just what I needed. It's a... Fun and charming. I love Luigi's Mansion. I never actually played the first one, to be honest. I never played the first one on the GameCube. Um, I just never got it. I don't know. I think I played it at a, I played a demo of it at a demo event for the GameCube before it came out, like in Lower Manhattan back in the day. But um, when I got my GameCube, I never actually played Luigi's Mansion on it. So I wish I had, because I loved the 3DS one. It was super fun. 
Um, so when they made one for the Switch, I was like, yay, fun. So it's super charming. It's very funny. I love, it's just a great sense of humor and it's very charming and it's a lot of fun. And so far it's been great. Um, my only complaint with it so far is the controls because um, when you're using your vacuum, you, you're you using the triggers to blow or suck, you know, and then you can, if you're vacuuming stuff up, you can use the thumbstick to go up, down, left, and right. Although it's also a little confusing because the joystick moves relative, the vacuum moves relative to where Luigi is facing. So depending on which way he's facing, left and right isn't what you're seeing on the screen. And I have a little visual, I'm just like, whoa, and he'll like spin around a couple of times as I navigate to where I need to actually be aiming it. Um, the problem comes when you're trying to aim the suction cup, because you can shoot a plunger that has a rope so that you can pull on the plunger and like, you know, yank objects around the environment to open doors or move stuff out of the way or find bonus stuff, whatever. But to aim that, you're using your thumb already to shoot the plunger. So to aim, like you hold it down and then you have to aim to where you want it to be and then you don't you only have one thumb. So you end up using the tilting the controller or your switch in portable mode to use motion controls to kind of aim it. And it's not great. Um, but it really became a problem during a boss fight. Uh, there was this piano playing boss that was a complete pain in the butt because I knew what I had to do. I just couldn't do it. It's one thing if you're playing a game and you're having a trouble with a boss battle because you can't quite figure out their pattern and you're not quite sure what you're supposed to do to beat them and it takes you a little while to figure it out and be like, oh, okay, I knew that I had to take the bomb and shoot it back into his piano and blow it up. And you had to do that repeatedly through the fight. And I knew that I had to do that. I just couldn't do it. I could suck up the bomb, but then by the time I could get the controls to aim it towards the piano, he'd already shut it and moved on and I missed my opportunity. It's a very short window. You have to be very quick. But when you're running, it's hard to aim and it's all whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And that boss fight was a little tough. So I anticipate further problems because I did read some reviews that said, oh, it's great ch charming and great fun and it's a terrific game, but there's some like difficulty spikes that are annoying and the controls are not great. There's some awkward controls. So I'm like, okay, so I don't know if the difficulty spikes are caused by the awkward controls like they did with this boss fight, which spiked the difficulty a little because the controls were awkward, or if it's something that's not that awkward to do, it's just super hard. I don't know, we'll see. So, but I have put Dragon Quest aside for the time being because it was making me angry and I didn't want to have to grind levels because there's no story involved in that. It's just constant fighting, which gets repetitive and boring. And then I would get bored with the game and then I would put it down and be mad at it. So I wanted to not ruin the game that I enjoyed. So we're playing Luigi's Mansion 3 now. Just an FYI, I've moved on. Let's all move on. So, come back next episode, and I'll have some more impressions on Luigi's Mansion. Hopefully they're still good. And uh, talk about some other stuff, too. Who knows what it'll be. Find out then. Bye!